Hi, welcome back to the Joy of Pouring with the Partners and a Critic Pouring for Beginners and the How To episode. So first thing we'd like to say is big shout out to all of our admins and our moderators, big shout out to Britt who's in my ear here and a big shout out and lots of love to all of our OG beans. And then we'd like to say to everybody else that hasn't subscribed, Please like, subscribe and share. Yes, share our videos and give it a thumbs up. When you do that, uh, it suggests uh, we've got a better chance of YouTube suggesting our videos to people that haven't seen them. And also when you subscribe, you can interact in the live uh, chat that we're gonna have right now that's going on in this live broadcast. Super fun, if you're not in there, you're missing out. You're missing out, so if you subscribe, if you subscribe, <laughs> if, you, if you subscribe, you can get in on the live chat, you can also comment and you can like on our video, so please do that. Brilliant. Okay, so Sean is, uh, sorry, Vanna is going to get on the um, on the live chats right now. I can hear Vanna's uh, advert for YouTube <laughs> going right now. And um, yes, I'm just going to show you, this is the new studio. So I'm just going to carefully um, plug the phone. And this is the studio. So there's the darling Vanna right there. Say hello, Vanna. Oh, hi, Vanna. Hi, hi, Vanna. <laughs> and we thought it was a very good idea of Rainbow Beans to put some artwork on the walls because you guys can see what is available. This is something really interesting. It's what we call a sun catcher bloom. We've reinvented the sun catcher. Uh, and, uh, oops, hitting it too hard. There's a bloom on both sides, you can see. And we will be showing you and telling you how to do those. But here we go. We've got the great little sink, kitchen area. Here's all the things we're going to be going over. There's some more art on the walls. We've got some nice light there. There's the house next door. And then we have my piggies on the wall right there. And then we're back round to Vanna again. If you're wondering what this is, it's a staircase up to the loft, which is a fantastic place for me to store all of our stuff. So there we go. So let's get on with it, the how-to episode. Let me just carefully click the phone back in the holder <laughs> and plug it in. There we go, fantastic. Now let's just flip it around. Oh dear, now you got a really good close-up of me there. And let's get on with the how-to show. So there we go. Let's just get the camera up a little bit. Oh, oh, da, da, da. Just playing around, sorry guys. We are in the throes of getting a new laptop so we can use the um, webcams that we have. Excuse me, I'm just getting a drink of water, friends. So we can use the webcam, so we can have a permanent camera set up looking straight down on our work surface, but also another camera so you can look around the studio and we can do the first little present and say hello. Okie dokie. So the how to episode. I've had lots of questions about how I do different forms of things and stuff like that. So first thing we're gonna do is um, I have a new bigger Spinner board, here we go, look at that. Oh, wow, fantastic. So lots of people ask me how I attach the spinner boards to the spinners like this. And more importantly, how do I make sure that the spinner is right in the middle of the actual board so we get a good even spin? So I'll show you, there we go. This is what I used to stick the board to the spinner. And as you can see, it came off really easy. It's this stuff called a uh, blue tack or sticky tack. Um, and you, you use it to stick posters to the walls or to walls, stuff like that. Uh, and it doesn't leave a mark on the walls, supposedly. But uh, yeah, the compression sucks uh, the uh, board to the top of the spinner that's aluminium and it works really nicely. And you can see how easily it came off, leaving you your cake spinner to still be used as a cake spinner should you want to. So I am just going to get uh-huh, here it is. Da, 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 da. We've got ourselves just some new of that blue sticky tack stuff. We only need to really use two pieces and split them in half because we want to spread them right out. So there we go, you can see just two little pieces. And then we're going to break these in half too. Bing, bing, bing. And bing, bing, bing. 
Then what we're going to do is, whoops, I just moved the, moved the work surface. Oh yes, I forgot to show you what the work surface actually is. Um, the work, uh, the, what I'm actually working on is one of those tool chests. Uh, this one is a, uh, this, uh, you can get many different brands, uh, Snap-on and all those kind of things. This one's a Husky, I think. Uh, you can get them from Home Depot, places like that, and they come on casters and they've got nine drawers in them, which is absolutely fantastic. I will actually pull the camera out at one point and show you, because I have all my tools in this big long drawer underneath, and then it holds all my little pots and mixing stuff, and it's a great storage device. Plus, it's on wheels, so I can move it around, and I can work all the way around it. Anyway, waffle, waffle, waffle. There you go, you can see the four bits of thin, I just kind of squished it out a little bit of the blue tack. Now, the way we figure out how to get, because this is round, obviously, and I use a square board. So, uh, I did have, that was a 20 inch, this is a 24 inch. So it's uh, uh, just four inches bigger, but it's just gonna allow us to use this nice, huge, round Fluid Arco. Big shout out to Fluid Arco, this little piggy. Hi guys, thank you so much for your love and support of us in our show. Uh, so yeah, we want to use this nice big 24 inch uh, pour mat, so I thought I'd get a bigger board. Now the way we make sure and figure out how to get the round in the middle of the square is, this is 24 inches square, okay? And the spinners are generally 12 inches wide. Okay, so all we've got to do is measure in six inches from here, from here, from here and here, and then you draw yourself a square. So what you then do is literally line up the spinner so every edge of the circle is just about touching the line of the square and you can draw from corner to corner if you like to figure it out but obviously when you stick the aluminium plate on you can't see the uh, x in the middle so the best way to do it like i said is just measure in six inches from either side and then draw yourself a square and then you plant your circle like this you plant your round spinner. Can we get in a bit closer? Is that a little bit better, guys? Sorry. Is that better, Brit? Are you still in my ear, my dear? Ah, fantastic. <laughs> I just get a, you're good. <laughs> Thank you, darling. So there you go, a little bit closer, guys, and you can see the square that I had drawn. So yeah, you just make sure that the round top of the spinner is touching the edges of the square here, and you just give it a good push down like this, uh, but the weight of the spinner, and then when we turn it upside down, the weight of the board is really gonna compress that uh, sticky tack stuff and give us a really good solid, solid bond that's not gonna come apart unless like you saw me do, you just pull it straight off and everything is absolutely fine. So anyway, let's give it a bit more of a push down. And this is where he turns it upside down and it falls off. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> so let's get the camera up and out a little bit. Bingo. There we go. It came unplugged. Yes, we're having a bit of issue with uh, this charging cord thingy majiggy. A little bit technically challenged here, unfortunately, guys. My apologies. Anyway, there we go. There's the new spinner board. As you can see, it's spinning really quite nicely. The center of what's spinning is the X. And let's get the old new spinner mat on it. And there you go. I draw the X uh, from corner to corner, guys. I also just cut, cut the corners of uh, the board off as well because Sometimes I could catch my knuckle as it's spinning and oh my gosh, does that really, really hurt. So I cut the corners off just for a bit of safety. But I draw lines for, from corner to corner before cutting them off, obviously, just so you can line up the mat as best as possible. Now, when I got this board from Home Depot, the lovely young gentleman that got sent down to the cutting area <laughs> was given a two foot by two uh, by four foot piece of oh this is half inch mdf by the way guys so half um, half inch mdf is uh, really good and is as thick as you need but anyway i went down to the cutting cutting area of home depot and the young guy that was sent down i gave him the uh, two by four sheet of half inch thick mdf and asked him to cut it directly in half 
and um, I got 24 inches by 24 and 1 8 inches. <laughs> so it's slightly off, ever so slightly. Um, this is what kind of makes out the, the lines that I've drawn from corner to corner. Kind of, if you look through the map, da, 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 da. you know, they do kind of meet up almost as best as they can, but this is as best as you really need. But there you go, there's the new spinner that we will do a piece of art on in a little while. There we go, so. Did you have to stick the silicone mat to the plywood? Right, hang on a second. I just got a call, I just got a hey sigh in my ear, so I'm pretty sure that's what uh, Van has just said. Is that what you were going to say, Britt? Uh, uh, do you stick? Do I stick the silicone mat to the board? Ah, what the material is. Ah, fantastic. Thank you, Britt. The material of the board is MDF. So it's medium density fiber board. Okay, guys. And it is half an inch thick. And it worked really well before. Now, uh, I primed this or actually I, uh, I bonding primed the top of the board first. Uh, and it's not providing. Oh, there you go. It's a bit better. Uh, if your silicone mat ever kind of kind of slips around on your board a little bit. Just get your wet rag, put a, you know, just wipe the board underneath it, put the mat back down, wipe the mat back down, and that will stick it pretty, pretty nicely to your board. And then after you've used it a couple of times, it will, uh, it will stick itself to the board pretty nicely as it is anyway. But there we go. Yes, Vanna. So that's about sticking to the board and that's what the board actually is. And there you go, half inch thick MDF. So there's the spinner. That's the how-to on the spinner. Guys, if anyone is watching whilst you're watching there, my friends, please, uh, if you have any questions, shoot them in the live text, in the live chat rather, sorry, live text, live chat, and we shall do our best to answer them. Uh, and, and, oh yes, I forgot, Vanna, we forgot. Last week's canvases. Of course, so I'm going to do the show and tell for this one. There you go. There is Vanna's canvas. Vanna's swipe. That beautiful. Excuse the light ring, guys. We're going to get a nice big uh, diffused light box. So it's really bright in here. But uh, it doesn't give you that light ring sheen. But there's Vanna's swipe. As you can see, that came out absolutely, absolutely beautiful. There we go. Uh, and there's the result of uh, my little bloom that I did. I managed to get a coat of resin on this. I was resining something else. And whenever I mix up resin, I always mix up a little too much and have a spare piece on hand in case there is a little too much because there's one thing worse than having too much resin and that's not enough resin to finish the piece. So there you go, there's the little bloom I did. And this leads us really nicely into another question how to, how do I finish off the back of my canvases? Now, here we go, here's a, here's a nice little uh, transfer swipe I did a while ago. Da, 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 da. Let's just show you that, it's quite pretty. There's some nice, nice pastel vibes to it. But there you go, I'll show you how I finish the back off. Now, there you go. This tape here, it's self-adhesive tape. And because I live in Canada, Canada da, da, I use hockey tape. <laughs> there you go. It's literally, uh, you can get it in white and black. Uh, you can get it in various thicknesses as well. Here's, uh, I think that's an inch and this is an inch and a half thick. All depending on how thick the actual uh, uh, frame actually is. But, you know, I'll use easily, I'll either use the inch on this one. But I will show you very quickly just how to do this so you can finish the back off really nicely. So it's all like this, you see. So when you actually put the little mounting hooks in and, the, and then you string it with a piece of wire. Uh, the hockey tape is nice because it doesn't mark the wall or anything like that, okay? And I think it's just a nice kind of uh, finish to the back. Uh, other people are really picky and don't like any paint on the back of here either. I say that's part of the creation process and a nice background to the signature and a little dedication should anyone want to buy it. But I'll show you really quickly now, guys. Let's get in close, 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 bingo. So we need a, uh, or I use rather, a, uh, what I call a scalpel or you call, you guys call a, um, Exacto knife. Exacto knife. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's the brand, isn't it? I guess Exacto. 
But here you go, I will show you how we will do it. So we just pull the tape off gently, and then, oh, let's just, uh, it's got a little fold over at the end, so let's just take that off. Oh, and this knife is rather blunt, so let's grab the other one. He says, <laughs> where did it go in the movement from you got to get used to your new studio because you've got, you put things in places now and you don't know where oh. they are. <laughs> Here is the other knife. Brilliant. Okay, guys. So hope you guys are getting a good view of that and it's nice and close and in focus. So we just basically stick it nicely. Don't worry about going to this edge at first, guys, but we just stick it nicely along the edge of the canvas frame or the cradle frame. And this is where it gets fun. You just literally at 45 degrees, hold the craft knife here and you just get it started and then just drag it along and it cuts off really nicely and cleanly like that. I hope that was in focus and good. Britt? It's looking focused on my camera. Brilliant. Okay, and then again with the craft knife, we just take it just to the edges of the frame here and we cut these two pieces of, uh, of the tape here. And then we gently, just with our fingers, start at the edge. Don't fold it over immediately. You just start at the edge and then keep running your fingers forwards and backwards and you get a nice uh, ad ad adhesion over the edge. And then I use something like this, which is an old um, ski pass card or a credit card, you can use anything. But then we just run it down like this. Okay, so let's get it at that angle. Da, da, da. Just run it like this and then it's really beautifully and flat done nicely looks great now i'll only just do this side quickly just to show you how we finish off that edge but again just like this let me see if that's hand focus in the thing stick it as close as you can and then we just stick it along the edge hey there Britt. i've got a hay side what's going on right Britt has just asked me, has just said to me, sorry, somebody in the live chat has said, can you use this tape on canvas as well? So I'm just gonna finish this bit off. So you just get your fingers over the edge, then get the card there, guys, and zip, zip. And it's beautifully stuck in there, really nice and flat. And as you can imagine, when that's all the way around, it looks really pretty. Now, can we use this tape, this hockey tape, this hockey tape on a canvas. Absolutely, you can. I am just about to do it. It's really funny you should mention that, Brit, <laughs> and whomever asked that, because Kathleen, because Kathleen, I've got these lovely pieces that I finally finished and got a nice, uh, got a nice coat of resin on. And these, as you can see, are canvas. So here we go, bingo, bingo. Because it's a thicker edge, absolutely you can. I just use the inch and a half, the thicker one. So again, we just stick this close to the edge, like this, stick it along the edge, just stick it down nicely, and we do exactly the same process again, guys. Like this, let me make sure. Yeah, all in focus beautifully. Again, keep the tape taut, and then with the X-Acto knife, you just start the cut, and then literally, just literally, start moving that you don't push into it you slice it like you're slicing a nice steak and then because it's an exacto knife it'll get that edge and just whoosh, cut it off like hot butter like hot butter beautifully and then just like with the cradle yeah you just get this little edge here make an incision make an incision there these two little edges boom boom and then literally you can just fold it around and that's how you finish off or well, that's how i finish off the back of my canvases and a deep edge one, this one. There you go. Fantastic, lovely. Thank you for asking that, Kathleen. <laughs> I wish I could say, aha. <laughs> Brit just says, where do I buy my tape? This is just, I, I love you guys. You guys are just on the ball. <laughs> I get my tape from Canadian Tire. Um, now, obviously being you know up in Canada, hockey tape is readily available absolutely everywhere because it's, it's the national number one sport, exactly. I get mine from Canadian Tire, but if you are in the US, 
I am sure. Anywhere you can buy skates and hockey sticks. Anywhere you can buy skates and hockey sticks in the USA, they will absolutely sell you, sell this Probably stuff Walmart. as well. Probably Walmart, absolutely. I, I would guess actually, absolutely Walmart would probably sell it as well. But anywhere they see, they sell hockey sticks, hockey skates, they will also sell this tape. Definitely Be Amazon. De oh yeah, definitely Amazon, there you go. But let's try and support local if we can. That's why I go to Canadian Tire. So um, there we go, that's where you can get it from. Janice just sent you 20 bucks. Oh Janice, you sent a sticker, bless your heart. Thank you so much Janice. You sweetheart, that's lovely. Yes, I did neglect to mention that if you are in the live chat, in the bottom right hand corner, there is a little uh, dollar sign that you can click on and it will take you to a secure page of little stickers of different denominations uh, where you can then send these stickers, some of them with little messages, uh, and they, are, they just help support us and support the show, uh, and they can just get be a good way of getting your uh, question or your comment in the live chat highlighted, recognized, uh, spotted more easily, and more likely answered if you have any questions. You should say too, because not everyone plays hockey. That hockey tape is fabric. Vanna. Hockey tape is made of fabric. You are so clever. Let me give you a good show, close up if anyone obviously doesn't know what the hockey tape is. Hockey tape, it's this fabric tape, as you can see like this. It's not quite duct tape or anything like that. It's a fabric, it's black fabric. And as you can see, the sticky is pretty sticky, but it's not, it's what they use to tape their boots and their gloves on. Uh, I believe, um, they, and they use it on their sticks as well. I believe, I don't know, but I'm guessing it could be something very similar, especially the white, to the same tape that you see boxers tape their gloves on. You know, you see them taping up before they put the, the I'm pretty sure it's got to be a very similar thing because it's a sport thing and um, it's, uh, it's not permanent, you see? It's, it's good and sticky, it sticks to the back of the canvas finishes it nicely, doesn't come off. You could pull it off if you want to, do you know what I mean? The glue is not permanent, but as long as you just leave the you know, nice backing on the back of the canvas, it doesn't come off. But yeah, I would say that um, I'm guessing that this white stuff would be very similar to the stuff that boxers use as well. So any sports store that does that or sells hockey sticks, you know, like we say, will sell, should sell this. And as you can see, it's exactly the same, the black and the white, it's a fabric tape. And uh, that's what makes it really nice to finish off the back of the canvases. And um, bing, bing, there you go. Great question, Vanna. Thank you for helping everyone get even more information out of this Lily Burns brain of me. She bought hockey tape on Amazon and it was clear. And I should mention that clear hockey tape is, I believe, plastic. Aha, uh -huh, right, excellent. Hi, Lily. Thank you for joining us, darling. Um, yes, the clear. Uh, what they call the clear hockey tape, it's almost like electrical tape because it's plastic, yes. It's not the same as the white and the black. It very much is, uh, very, very, very much is plasticky. Kind of like the electrical tape that they use to, uh, to cover up the old uh, electrical outlets or, or, you know, the wirings of the electricians. There we go, look at me just kind of clearing up the whole time. So, uh, where is my little thing? Brilliant, excellent. So that's the finishing the back of the pieces. Now, I've also had questions of how to, how I decant my uh, gallons of paint. Now I know this might seem a bit of a funny one, but here you go, I've got a nice brand new pan of Glidden uh, Premium. I buy the Premium in the satin base because I find that it has less bubbles and when I stir it up, it has less bubbles. And then especially when I decant it into one of these little pots, this is an old color to go that I cleaned out. Uh, and interesting little fact, another little how to, how did I clean out this pot so absolutely fabulously? I cleaned it out with this product. Here we go, up in Canada now. I thought this was North American everywhere. It's not, it's Canadian products. I'm so sorry, you can't get it in, uh, in the States. It's a product called Dynamic, it's called Chomp, uh, but it's a degreaser and a cleaner, but basically it's an oil, or, uh, orange oil based cleaner. Now in the States, um, some friends of ours, a uh, uh, shout out to you guys, I think it was George Ann and maybe Heather as well, found out that there was a alternative called, 
Oh gosh. Like orange cleaner or something like yeah, that. Yeah, orange, orange cleaner or something like that. And they said it worked really well. Uh, this stuff is fantastic. We use it um, because Sean and I are painters and decorators in our day job. Uh, it is Latex Paints and Arch Nemesis. It's its kryptonite. It absolutely destroys it. I think I just saw a sticker fly through, did I? Yes. Oh, GE, thank you so much for that sticker. Bless your heart. Thank you so much indeed. But yes, uh, this is what I used. I mix it 50-50 with water into a spray bottle. And I sprayed some of it in here. I filled it half with hot water, shook the, shook the, shook the, um, shook, uh, shook it to bits <laughs> uh, with very hot water, left it for a while. And as you can see, it came out absolutely beautiful. Now, how do I decant from the gallon into this? Now, I can appreciate that a lot of our viewers and a lot of people um, that uh, uh, have uh, issues with strength in their wrists and things like that can have issues. So, oh dear. I gave this a little stir, a good stir yesterday, but as you can see, it separated ever so slightly. Just orange a little. Goop, it's called in the States. Thank you, orange goop. I knew one of our lovely OG beans would um, would uh, would remember and know and tell you. So orange goop apparently is something very similar in the states. Uh, I'm not sure. Can you tell us whoever uh, said that in the live? Do you uh, dilute it down or do you use it straight? Because some of them can be a little bit harsh on your skin. Zap has one as well. Brilliant. There you go. Always carries it. Ah, oh, fantastic. There we go, guys. Fantastic. I love you guys all helping each other out in the countries where these products aren't available. So anyway, there we go. As you can see, just gave it a little bit of a stir. So for, I can appreciate for the people um, that, uh, that, that can have trouble lifting weight and things like this. Uh, doing it this way is a bit of a no-no. But what you can get is those little lid things that you uh, get to clip on. That's a spout. Mm -hmm. And you can literally just pour it out through the spout straight into this little guy here. But this is how I'm gonna do it. This is how we do it. Let's just make sure a little bit close. I'm not sure if directly above is going to be the best way to see this, but anyway. So um, it's really quite full. So you have to pour it quickly at first and I have a brush on hand to wipe any mess, okay? But we're gonna go for it. Bingo, bingo, bingo. And then I fill it right to the good quart part at the top. Now you just hold it, let the last drips go, bingo. Then we've got a few little drippies here on the edge. Bingo, bingo, I'm showing you all the painting and decorating trade secrets. And now you see that little move I did there, guys. This is what we do so we can keep a nice clean kind of painting because uh, Vanna and I, our clean freaks, <laughs> which is and a little bit OCD about it, which makes us fantastic painters and decorators. So after you've poured it out, you're gonna end up with paint in this lip here, guys. So get the brush and you just, as you saw me do, you put it in the edge and you do that and it literally lifts the paint out of the groove and puts it back in the can. Wipe the little brush, lid back on the can. Let me just, here we go. I've hurt my wrist, so I can't thump it with my fist anymore. And we're done, there you go. That's how I decant my paint into the little pots. And as you can see, let's go nice and close, bingo. There are no bubbles in that sucker at all whatsoever, which is exactly what we want. Or there might be a couple in there, but we're just gonna leave that for a little while. And especially if you leave it, you know, overnight or so, any bubbles that are in it are going to come straight out, straight away. Bingo, bingo. So that's that one, number four. Are there any other how-tos, you guys, that you would like to know? I'm sure there, there isn't, because if there were, Brit would have given me a hey sigh in my ear. Brilliant. So. Okay then, let's just let me just check my thing. Da, da, da. So brilliant. Let's now move on to some mixing, okay guys? How to with the mixing. So let's just start at the kind of basics here. Apologies for everybody that, anybody that already knows this, but this is for the people that don't, that are watching the how to because they want to know some things, okay? So a little drink of water, chitty chat, chitty chat. Whiffle waffle. <laughs> All Vanna's pancakes. 
Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so pouring mediums and mixing our paints. Okay, guys. So um, there are there there are two kind of uh, rough ratios for me where I am using Joe Sonia gloss varnish and the Bear eighty three hundred uh, uh, interior. Uh, high gloss enamel. Now don't worry guys, if you haven't got these ingredients and you don't use these ingredients, I'm gonna mention some others as well, uh, because basically it doesn't really matter whether you're using that as a pouring medium, or I know some people, and you've seen some of us, some of our lives where we're using the Flood Flow Troll, just as a pouring medium on its own, a paint extender, uh, with our dollar store paints and with our pigments and things like that. Now, I've also seen some people, you can also buy pouring mediums just in their own bottle as well, like branded. I know Liquitex makes some. I know Color Art makes some, don't they, Brit, I think? It's an animal, yeah, yeah. But you can buy the kind of ready-made to ready uh, ready -made pouring mediums that you add your paint to, just to extend them and make them move further, basically, because we're doing fluid art and we need it to move. So um, yes, so we've done um, pouring mediums just using the Flood Flow Troll on its own. Um, but I have recently just seen a video um, because I was very intrigued to find out exactly what a ribbon pour actually is. Uh, and someone in the Acrylic Crazy Train, let's just say hello to everybody on the Acrylic Crazy Train. Hi there, our fantastic jelly beans and our fantastic passengers. If you haven't joined us on the Acrylic Crazy Train, please do so. It is uh, a Facebook group uh, for beginners of fluid art and that's where you'll find all of us right there just waiting to help you uh, succeed and get the results you want. Uh, anyway, uh, someone had asked about ribbon pours and uh, Britt had suggested a friend of hers, Christine Jasnek, no, Jazek, Jazek, Jazek. I'm sorry, Christine, if you are watching, Christine Jazek. Um, she did a ribbon pour because I'd seen many people do ribbon pours and they, you know, they never looked the same thing. And I was kind of a bit, you know, I want to know what one is. So I watched hers uh, and it was fantastic. So I do suggest you check her out. Um, she made a fantastic ribbon pour and she does it where she uh, layers a cup as if you were going to do uh, some, for, some sort of pour, but she pours it in a ribbon pattern beautifully all over the canvas and it looks fantastic. But anyway, to the point, she uses Flood Flow Troll and Glue All as well as her pouring media. Uh, now, uh, if you've got these ingredients, guys, uh, if you've got the, just the Flood Flow Troll and you're using, um, and you are using, say, dollar store paints or other paints of that kind of thin consistency, you would want to use, uh, you couldn't really make a bloom, um, uh, pour, uh, a bloom, pouring medium with this, but this is a really great pouring medium for all of the other styles. Uh, and I would use a ratio of around about, say three to one of your paint. Uh, maybe add a little bit of water. I know um, Britt uses this uh, pouring medium sometimes. Uh, uh, and that's gonna be really great for all other techniques apart from blooms. Um, some people argue swipes as well, but I've done swipes where, they're, where I've used really thin paints and they've come out okay. But it's really for the bloom that you need that thicker consistency. Very generally and very basically, all other techniques are going to be thinner, the PM, and you'll put with the paint in it, the end result is going to be thinner than your colors for a bloom, okay, guys? So, uh, I know, uh, yes, Christine uses um, five parts flow troll to two parts glue all to one part paint for her pouring medium, but she does say when she makes, when she uh, mixes her paints for her ribbon pouring, she does make them a little bit thicker than for other kinds of pours. Excellent. Wiffle waffle, wiffle waffle. Any questions? Is everything cool? Is everyone groovy? Groovy says, says Brit. Sorry guys, just getting another glassio of water. So, right, yes. The point of showing you all of these different um, ingredients is that really, no matter what the ingredients are, the end consistency is going to be very, very similar. Okay, so if I'm using my Bear and my Joe Sonia, and I'm gonna use, I want to use it for, uh, uh, say a, uh, say a, um, 
all of the techniques fly out of my head <laughs> the instant I say that. If I want to do a dirty pour, let's say, okay, guys, as we've done before, where we pour all of our colors, just, you know, really throw them in the cup and then pour them out, uh, I would use a ratio of around about two to one. And that would be two parts of the bear to one part of the uh, Joe Sonia. Now, let's mix up some of that right now and you can see the consistency. And then I'll show you the consistency of some bloom paints that I have mixed up here all ready and you can see the differences okay guys and then what I thought we could actually do if we've got time and people are watching and still interested would be to um, maybe even mix up some colors using Christine's uh, recipe Vanna and you could have a go at doing a ribbon pour. Oh I want to do a ribbon pour. That sounds like fun doesn't it so okay guys let's just show you um, the consistency okay so if i was going to do a dirty pour or a ring pour or a uh, funnel pour or a uh, what other pours would i be doing with a thinner consistency brit help me out here darling <laughs> sorry brit she's also brit bless her is also in the in the live reading comments I just asked you for a couple more examples of different techniques where we would need the thinner, uh, thinner recipe. Dutch pour. Yeah, Dutch pour. Thank you, thank you, Vanna. There you go, Dutch pour. Yes, the Dutch pour is the Dutch pour of all of the techniques. Actually, is going to be the thinnest of all, isn't it, um, uh, Brit? If you're doing it properly with a hairdryer, right? Because you really want it to move nicely and easily with the hairdryer. So there you go. I guess it would go say, blooms are the thickest and then pretty much everything else. Uh, then I would put swipes, then everything else. Um, dirty pour, ring pour, funnel pour, traveling pour, uh, cloud pour, things like that. Oh, sorry, we got a... We can't make it any quieter. We can't make it any quieter. Our neighbor's car alarm is going off. <laughs> Um, and then right at the other end of the scale, you would have the thinnest um, pouring medium with your colours, which would be the uh, Dutch pour. Fantastic. Thanks, mister, for, for stopping that. That's really great. So let's mix up some pigment at a two to one ratio, which I would use to say uh, do, uh, yes, a dirty pour, funnel pour, open cup, uh, dirty cup, travelling cup, things like that. Okay, let's just pick ourselves a... Uh, a, a pigment to mix up because of course you know we love our pigments right here uh, and this one is the fantastic egotistical well wow, it's one of the new sup stuck up pigs from uh, tlp and fluid art co uh, it's a chameleon pigment and goes through so many beautiful colors it's absolutely amazing so let's mix up some of that but we're going to mix it up um, thinner so it would be a for, uh, like I said, for a funnel pour or something like that. Now these little baby cups, two ounce cups. This first little mark here is 15. There's another mark here for 30, 45. Now we know 30 is just over one ounce, okay? So I'm gonna mix up an ounce. So I'm going to put in two to one. So this bottom little mark here, if you can see it real close on the corner, is 10 mil. So I'm gonna fill it up to 10 mil. Dun, 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 dun. Bingo, that's it. 10 mil of the Joe Sonia. And then I can't help myself. These parts, uh, the chameleon pigments aren't cheap, but I can't help myself but be generous because the effect is so amazing. So let me just show you how much for an ounce. I'm gonna put that much in guys, okay? Bingo, bingo, in it goes. And again, we want to hold these away from our face, open them away from our face, close them away from our face because mica powders are not good for our respiratory systems. Excellent. So here we go. Now we're going to make what we call the ink because we're basically just putting a pigment in varnish and that is basically what an ink is, <laughs> our pigments in varnish. And the thing that makes the chameleon pigments so amazing and special is that they have mica in them as well, dyed mica, uh, which helps them go all of these crazy beautiful colors, as I'm sure you can, there you go. 
I can move it around and is that giving you some craziness? Colors vanner on the camera? Well, I try to pause so you don't hear your own voice. Okay. No, I'm saying uh, the picture. Anyway. Yes, so, oh, it's working very well. <laughs> there we go, guys. So now we need some of the Bear 8300. Now, I only bought the can out just to show you what it looks like, okay, guys? And you've got to make sure this is very important. But deep base 8300. Okay, and don't let them put any tint in it for you or shake it up. You want it untinted because we put the color in ourselves. We put the tint in ourselves with the paints or with the pigments that we put in. Okay, guys, so there we go. Now, we need, uh, we're mixing this up two to one. So uh, I, again, I decant some of my, my um, 8300 into a spare little pot here. Now I use a syringe to measure it out because it's super nice and easy. Bingo, bingo, there you go. 20 mil, bingo. And literally just whop it in. <laughs> bingo, done. And I'm a complete clean freak, so I'm now just gonna wipe the end of my syringe here. I always remember to put the lids back on your stuff, guys, because any air trapped in there will start to dry it out a little bit. It's also handy having this sink real next to me. Can you hear your own voice in your Bluetooth? No, I don't hear my own voice okay, in Bluetooth. Good, it's, the Bluetooth. It's working well, it's working really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent, so there you go, guys. 20, 20 mil of the, uh, of the uh, Bear 8300 in there. And just mixing it up real quick. Da, 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 da. Now. That one was called Egotistical. I showed you right at the beginning. Did someone just join and miss it? No, well, I had it paused. I didn't see oh, you had it paused, you couldn't see. Yeah, yeah, egotistical, there it is. So, and let's see. You see how quickly, guys, it drizzles straight off the stick and hardly forms any trace at all. I mean, if anything, I would maybe add just a dash of water to this, just like I said, as uh, Britt does to her recipe she uses when she uses the Floetrol paint and just a little bit of water. I would maybe add just a little bit of water to this, or you could always add just a little bit more, a few more drops of the Joe Sonia, uh, but it's hardly leaving a trace at all. Is that really nicely in focus, guys? And you can see it not leaving a trace, right, Britt? Fantastic, because we want these, these shows to be educational. And talking about educational, a little plan Britt and I have come up with. Starting next week, big news. The big news is we are moving to Saturdays. And just before the show at one o'clock, so Vanna and I are gonna be on Saturdays now at one o'clock, not Sundays anymore, because Sundays we did a poll on our Facebook group. Sundays are generally uh, family days and days that people have other activities planned. And the general consensus was Saturday would be a better time, a better day for the show. And we're gonna keep it at the same time, one o'clock. Uh, but before the show, Brit is going to be doing, we're gonna be, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a new kind of train, let's say. I don't wanna use the word collab because as soon as you use the word collab, people go groan. Oh my God, not another collab of 600 artists over three days, you know. Uh, but it's basically Brit is it's going. A back -to -back. It's a back to back, exactly. Brit is going to be first doing her, doing a uh, doing a premiere. I think I might be able to talk her into doing a live, but I'm not sure about that one, Brit. <laughs> she laughs in my ear. But anyway, that's the big news. That's what's going to happen. So next week, guys, please let everybody know. Next week. Uh, not next week, sorry. Every two weeks we're doing the show. That's the other news for anybody else that didn't know. It's going to be bi-weekly now, so every other week. Less is more was the, uh, was the consensus. So every other week we're going to do the show, and then before the, uh, before the show, Britt will be there with a premiere, and it's going to be a back-to-back -back of a couple of your favourite artists. And we're still in, uh, you know, chilly channing and throwing ideas about this, but we might invite guest artists to join but uh, again, we don't want to make the thing too long and too imposing. We want it just to be a nice groovy show. Anyway, Whiffle Waffle, there you go. So there you go, guys. That's the consistency I would use for pretty much every other technique, apart from the bloom or the swipe. 
And if I was using this for the Dutch pour, I would make it even thinner. So it moves a lot easier with the hairdryer. So there you go, two to one for the uh, for, for, for the Bear 8300 and the Joe Sonia pouring media. So since we mentioned uh, uh, Christine, I'm not sure, you know, I, I don't know if Christine invented this recipe. I'm not saying that. It was just, I watched Christine's video and this is where I learned it first. So apologies if anyone else uses this that claims to invent it or anything like that. I'm sorry, but that's the first place I saw it. But I figured, why don't we mix some of this up right now, right? Okay, so we can see the consistency of what we're gonna do for a uh, ribbon pour. And Vanna can do a ribbon pour. Yeah. Brilliant. So Vanna, do you wanna choose yourself some colors, darling? Um, let's just go with the tube plants to begin with. Sorry. That's all right, yeah, we're just kind of learning and bashing things around a little bit, you know. Yeah, some tube paints, and don't forget all these ones over here, sweetheart. Let's choose, like, say, three or four. Okay. Oh my gosh! Now Van is just like ah. Oh, there. Yeah, this will give you a good me a good chance just to very gently unclip this, take this out. Da, 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 da. Hi, friends, and just flip this around. There we go. And let's show you the tool bench while Vanna is just choosing a couple of colours. Here's the tool bench. It's rather fantastic. Look, it's got all my tools in it. This lovely uh, 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 shallow drawer. So I've got all my tools immediately there. And the uh, drawers are quite cool because they lock. But I've got all of my uh, cell activators there. And then on this side, they fit all of my uh, pots and everything. We're going to be going over and using... We're going to uh, we're going to go be going over these uh, new pots from Fluid Art Co. Oh, I'm just dropping them around everywhere. As you can see, they're black plastic. But why black plastic? You ask. You know what's wrong with the clear ones? They're for mixing up your interference pigments because they're dark. They'll show you the interference pigment a hell of a lot easier than trying to get the white pot in the light. And you know, ah, oh, ah, oh, yeah, it's that colour. It shows it a lot easier. The same way it shows you. Uh, the uh, color of the interference pigment on the stirring stick when you uh, when you stir on a black stick rather than a white stick. But anyway, there you go. Yes, look, all the drawers. Then I did hear actually um, Brit say, wow, look at you, you're so organized. Um, and then you go, there you go. There's all my tapes and everything that I finished the uh, the back of the, uh, the things with. And we've got some deep drawers down here. I've got a glue gun and some... Uh, oh, yeah, an apron in there, things like that. But anyway, there you go, guys. Yeah, there's my lovely workstation and the top to it. There you go. It's just a piece of uh, mel melamine. Isn't that what it's called, Vanna? Yes. There we go. Let me show you, there you go. It is half inch thick and it's just cantilevered over. I will put a little bracket here just to support it because this has already just started to go off level, but I just literally, uh, again, the same as my spinner top, stuck it to the top of the workbench with some of the blue tack, and I did just put for safety one screw in this side and one screw in the other side. But that's, that's what uh, we are working on. So bingo, there you go. These are your colors, Vanna. What have you got here, darling? You've got orange. Oh, okay, oh yeah, I like that. What have we got here? We've got, oh yeah, PBO iridescent red violet. We've got the blue iridescent green. Ooh. Oh, we got the, oh, you picked up the old quinacridone violet. Lovely. Oh, and then, yeah, oh, yeah, the opera pink. <laughs> and then the yellow. Fantastic. Now, what I saw um, Christine do uh, is she mixed up the, uh, she mixed up about six colors and she had them in two pots. So she did one ribbon and then another ribbon. And then there you go. So that's what we're going to do. So uh, let me just da, 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 flicker this around. Hi there, I just see a picture from uh, Letcherbot. Hi there, Linda, how you doing, friend? Bingo, now let's just plug this back in to make sure it's still working. And are we in focus? Bingo, there we go, that looks kind of straight. Excellent. Okay then, Vanna. We've got to mix up some paints. Now, if we'd had more time to practice, we would have done this a lot sooner because I've now got to measure out five. We've only got 10 minutes. We've only got 10 minutes. It's 10 to 
10 to 2. Well, this is the other thing, though. Uh, I don't know. Can anyone tell us in the live chat if uh, there's uh, any other premieres that we're going to crash into after 10 to 2? I don't want to cut anyone off, but I would keep painting if people want to watch. Okay, yeah. Britt says in my ear, not that she's aware of. I know Linda's, um, uh, Linda's a fantastic supporter of so many artists. <laughs> Hi, Linda. Hi there, Bot Bean, darling. Um, she usually knows what's up. So, Linda, do you know anything? Is there anyone after us or anyone going at two o'clock? Because otherwise we'll just keep going for a little bit longer. Um, or we can actually plan to do this next week, use Christine's recipe and do a ribbon pour vanna. Tassie. Tassie does have, ah, right, okay, brilliant. Just do this next week. Brilliant. brilliant. We will do Christine uh, Jaznex, uh, sorry, Jazex. Um, uh, 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 flow troll and glue recipe and we will do Vanna will do herself a ribbon pour wow how time flies Brit like right that's crazy that's so crazy so okay what we're going to do is real quick we're going to do right I am going to do the first stage of um, the sun catcher bloom because I need to do because uh, to show you how we do one side, then you let it dry completely, flip it over, do the other side, but you've got to mask off the first side. So what we're going to do real quick right now, ba -ba 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 -ba, on the new spinner, bingo, there we go. All right, so whoop, 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 let's get this up a little bit <laughs> and make sure, try to get it nicely centred, as centred as it can be, because we're... I there we go. Overhead camera shot is, fabulous. is it nicely and in focus, guys? Yeah. It's fantastic. Now, these are the offcuts of the uh, uh, 2x4 that got cut. <laughs> uh, they're roughly eight inches square, but um, not quite. <laughs> so they're a little bit off. It doesn't matter. That's absolutely fine. Ah, oh, right. Yes, Dan. So, ah. Oh, uh, our pouring medium is a little too thick still to use it right now. So I've got to very quickly add another 10 mil of, because I mix that up for a, uh, for funnel pour or something like that. And we need it three to one for a bloom, because I'm going to do a bloom because these sun catcher blooms are called sun catcher Touch blooms. The Touch the screen. There we go. Is that better? Yeah, Brett says there's a blurry, mine's quite clear, but I have a small screen. Yeah, is that better, Brett, or is it still blurry? Ah, oh, right, okay. Beginners, uh, GE, what technique do you recommend for beginners? What technique do I recommend for beginners, says GE. I would recommend uh, for beginners uh, something like the uh, open cup or a flip cup. Flip cups are absolutely oh, great yeah, fun. So yeah, I would actually say that I would start with flip cups because they're so much fun. That's where you make all your colours, pour them into a cup and literally you put the canvas on top of the cup and you flip it upside down like this. You let it wait for a minute and then you just literally lift the cup up and the paint goes blue and makes the most amazing pattern. So that's what I would suggest for a beginner. I would suggest a flip cup. Mm. So here we go. We've got some black color to go. So I'm just going to put some of this down. Da -da -da. Put enough down so we're going to get the bloom to move nicely. Now, some of my, uh, some of my bloom uh, sun catchers have been swipes, but at the moment, oops. Oops, oops, oops. Wiping the edge of the pot. I put the rag back in the pot. <laughs> oops, a daisies. Exactly. Now let's just get another rag to clean myself up a little bit. Okay. Bingo. So let's uh, give this a good tap and let's show you the consistency now. See how it stays up, guys. It leaves a good trace. So, forgive me. This is going to have air bubbles in it, but it doesn't matter. So, there we go. Let's put some of this beautiful colour down. There we go. 
Now I'm going to put some of this down and this is the Triarch Quinacridone Magenta. There we go, see the consistency? Drizzles nicely. So I'm just gonna put some of this down. Quickly, quickly, because we don't want to crash into Tesla. Five minutes. Five minutes, that's perfect. Uh, and again, guys, anyone that's just joined or didn't hear me say earlier, we're moving the show in two weeks' time. So two weeks' time, I believe, is going to be the 16th uh, of, uh, of uh, July. We are going to be moving to Saturdays. And Britt will be... Uh, we'll be going back to back with Britt going first with her premiere on a Saturday. Uh, and then we're going to be on Saturdays at 1 p.m. the same time, 1 p.m. PST, 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. on the East Coast. And that's a nine. Saturday in two weeks is the 15th. Thank you, Britt. I did check when I was looking earlier, but I'm going off the top of my head at the moment. And that's why I'm... Uh, very grateful to have you in my ear to say, yeah, no, sir, <laughs> Saturday in two weeks is on the 15th. <laughs> so there we go, guys. So we'll be back Saturday the 15th, 1 p.m. And we have the new edition of the lovely Brit from Brit Clayton Design. If anyone's watching and doesn't know who this lovely lady is or follow her on Facebook or on Instagram or on uh, YouTube, please go check her out. Brit Clayton Design, as it sounds. B-R-I-T-T, -T, isn't it, Brit? And she's not in my ear. <laughs> oh, you're there, you're there. B-R-T-T, -T, yeah, Clayton, C-L-A-Y-T-O-N, design. And you will find her. So here we go, guys. Let's get in nice and close. We've got a few minutes left. We've got the last dregs of this gold. See, I wanted to show you also, you know, how to mix up your CA. Next time is going to be the how to episode part two. So there we go. Okay, guys, now please forgive my blow out. They're not, uh, I, I'm out of practice at the moment. So. Ooh, that was lucky. <laughs> the earpiece nearly came out right in it. So there we go. Let's get a nice close up. I really need to mix up some new of the CA. It's not working its best at the moment. I tried one of these last night and uh, I had to scrape it and I was ever so sad because I wasted some egotistical. But, you know, they can't all be zingers and, uh, you know, you are going to waste some paint. There's no getting around it. You can be as frugal as you can be, which I like to try, but you will and you are going to waste pain. Yeah, I blew way too hard and I blew right into the pillow here. It's a bit of a shame. Two minutes, so we better spin this puppy and spin a good. All right, so there we go, let's make sure we are. Here we go, so here we go, spin. Now I'm just keeping my finger on the edge because these bits of paint will make it to the edge. And really, we needed to leave the Gold cell activate for a bit longer because it likes to take a bit more time. Oh, there we go. I love it. Look at negative space bloom. Ooh. Now, I wish I could say I meant to do that. <laughs> but we've got some beautiful cell structures you can see here, guys. Uh, let me bring it up nice and close. There you go. We've got some great cell structure right through the kind of middle to this side here but we've got this lovely just band of stripe of color here. And then this other lovely negative space. Brilliant. Oh, I think it's quite pretty actually. Now these cells in the middle are just gonna grow further and further as the uh, cell activator sinks because the gold, Rust-Oleum gold mine does take a bit longer to sink. But anyway, we will show you the dry results next week. Uh, not next week, we will show you the dried results on Saturday the 15th, every two weeks. Every two weeks we shall be back. So please join us on Saturday the 15th at 1 p.m. But please join us before that for the premiere of the lovely Brit because we're going back to back with Brit. Oh, look at these little tiny cells in the corner there. Ooh, they're pretty. Excellent. So anyway, guys, let's just get the camera out. 
and open it this way. Oops, sorry. Da, 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 da. It's better and I. So thank you so much, guys, for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Britt, for being in our area. Big shout out to all of our OG beans. Sorry for me holding the camera. We're going to get it set up better for next week. But anyway, thank you so much for your love and support. Happy 4th of July, everybody in the States there. I hope you're having a fantastic weekend. Happy Canada Day to everyone in Canada. And as always, happy pouring. Mwah. Ciao, guys. See you on the 15th. Please,